Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. Today I'm going to do something that I've gotten a few requests for and I'm going to show off my Linux system that I use every day. So that being said, let's dig right in. Alright, so to start things off, a little groundwork. My Linux system of choice is Fedora. That's my favorite distribution and I have a few reasons for that. First of all, it's got a great focus on security. It is more focused on security than the likes of Ubuntu or even Debian. And beyond that, it has great compatibility. You can find almost any piece of software that you need to run on Linux that's compatible with Fedora. Another reason why I really like it is because it's got up-to-date software. So you're never going to be behind on package versions. You get all the latest features and it's just a good experience. And finally, I pick it because it has good online support. There are millions of people using Fedora Linux uh, as far back as, wow, uh, nine years ago in 2016. That feels wrong. Uh, Fedora Linux had 1.2 million users back then, and it's in the multiple millions now. So you're in good company and you're going to be able to find help online pretty easily. With all of that in mind, who is Fedora Linux for? Well, I would say that it's for seasoned users who are really used to Linux and can get the most out of it. But I also think that it's for new users. I think that new users will have a great experience if they pick Fedora. Of course, there's more than just one spin of Fedora. There is a Fedora spin for almost every desktop environment out there. So which one did I choose? Well, let me show you. So this is Fedora XFCE, and as you can see, I've done a little groundwork to theme it. You may not even realize that this is Linux at first, given the looks. Uh, for example, here's our start menu, and uh, yeah, if you're thinking this looks similar, it, it is a carbon copy of Windows 95, uh, which is good because for me, Windows 95 was the first system that I ever used growing up. And so I really like the ability to, in the modern day, use that familiar and comfortable user interface. So yeah, we've got a Windows 95 look going on. And you know, this really plays into something that's important about Linux. It gives you choice. You know, you can make it look like whatever you want. You can make your workflow whatever you want. And it's going to adapt to your needs rather than you adapting to its configuration. So I want to show you around my system a little bit. Again, this is XFCE. And if we go into uh, my list of applications here, I'll show you what I'm using. I don't put a whole lot of software on my system. I like to keep it pretty lean, uh, but you can see I have Visual Studio Code, which honestly, I'm looking for a replacement. If you know a good text editor that's available on Linux other than VS Code, Definitely let me know. I'm interested to try that out. Uh, going into graphics, I just have a couple things here. Inkscape, Krita, and LibreOffice. We'll talk about that more in just a moment. Uh, you'll notice I don't have a video editor here. That's because I do all my video editing on my iPad. It's just better. I mean, yes, there's DaVinci Resolve on Linux, but frankly, that's just... It's such a pain in the ass. I spend more time trying to get it working than I do actually using it. So moving on to Office, I use LibreOffice for that. I actually have a spreadsheet open here right now. One thing I like about LibreOffice is that it's literally a ripoff of Microsoft Office from 2003. And <laughs> that sounds really backhanded, and I'm sorry if it does. But I like that because that's the interface that I went to school learning. And to be able to still use something similar today is very nice. You can see what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, analyzing some iPad OS vulnerabilities, just getting to grips with what the security landscape for iPad OS looks like these days. Uh, if you want to see a video analyzing different software's security scores and such, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, for web browsing, I am using Firefox, and yes, I do use Proton VPN. No, this is not sponsored by them, but hey, Proton, I like your products. If you want to throw me some money to talk about them, I think we can work something out. 
that's really all there is to show here in the software of the, si of the system. Uh, so let me show you some of the things I use it for. So one thing is running large language models. So you can see if we exit here and then clear the screen, I am actually running Llama 2 Uncensored. And that's for a very good reason. See, I like to use Llama 2 Uncensored because I have a hobby of writing some less than legitimate software. I don't sell it, I don't make it public. But what I do is I, I use Llama 2 Uncensored to create software that has that has the capability of being used maliciously. And then I send that to the rel relevant vendors. And that way they can figure out a workaround to prevent this stuff from working. I've had middling success at this. Um, and here's the thing. If I wanted to, I could write this stuff and I could put it on GitHub and get a bunch of notoriety. But I don't do that because I'm trying to be responsible about this. So word to the wise, if you're ever going to get into software development of the black hat variety, uh, let the vendor know about it first before you make it public. It's just the right thing to do. So yeah, as you can see, I have this great Windows 95 theme, and it really covers everything in the system. Like if I open up the uh, file browser here, you'll see that I have, you know, my file browser, nothing fancy. Uh, and what else can I show you? So we've got my file system here. Again, this is a 256 gig disk. One thing that I really like about Linux in general, but also about Fedora Linux, is that it doesn't use a lot of disk space. Uh, which is ideal because I want to stretch my disk space as far as I can. And yeah, having it use the smallest amount possible, especially with something like XFCE, is amazing. So you have your workspace switcher down here so I can have different workspaces open. Uh, that's really important because it, it's easy for a traditional desktop to turn into a mess of floating windows piling up on one another. Uh, going into my system tray here, you'll see that I have uh, two hours of battery life remaining. That's probably because I'm recording right now. Uh, you can see I'm running Proton VPN. I've got OBS Studio. And you can see today's date. But the thing that I like about this is that it's really lightweight. So let me just show you. Uh, oh, I don't have HTOP. So that's how you install software, sudo dnf install in the name of the software you want to install. Uh, we're just throwing htop on here real quick. Little tutorial on how to install software quickly. But if we run htop, you'll see, so I'm running a large language model right now along with uh, several applications open, and I'm using nine and a half gigabytes of RAM. This is a seven billion parameter large language model. Uh, let me show you what the performance is like. And this is just on a 10th Gen i5 mobile processor. Uh, yeah, no graphics card. So write a bash script that updates a Fedora Linux system. So you'll see this is what the performance that I get out of it is like. It's not great, but you have to understand this this laptop has half of the horsepower as my iPad, uh, so it's really not working with a lot. And this is totally usable. But yeah, I use local large language models quite a bit, uh, especially for when I'm writing Ansible or Terraform code. Uh, but yeah, and again, if you know a text editor that's that works on Linux that's preferable to VS Code, definitely let me know. So why should you choose Fedora? Well, it focuses on the user experience and it gives you the interface you want. It can be modern and sleek. It can be ancient and clunky. It can be Windows 95. It can be Mac OS. You really get to pick any interface you like. And that's not a feature exclusive to Fedora. That's a good thing about the entire Linux ecosystem. So if you want to have the interface that you prefer, like I prefer Windows 95, 
then you can have it and it's not difficult to set up. That customizability is a big reason why I really encourage people to give Linux a shot. And again, Fedora Linux focuses on security, which as a security engineer, that means a lot to me. Uh, I really appreciate that. It comes out of the box with SE Linux, so you know that it's going to have that mandatory access control system that's the best of the best. I also throw an antivirus on them. I won't tell you which antivirus, because I don't want you to kill me, uh, but I do run an antivirus, and people say all the time, like, oh, Linux doesn't need an antivirus, you don't need an antivirus on Linux. Here's the thing, Linux malware exists. I can prove it. All I have to do is spin up a honeypot connected to the public internet, and I'll get dozens of samples of Linux malware within 24 hours. Like, Linux malware exists, it is out there. Now, is it more difficult to, to compromise my laptop than it is a publicly facing server? Yes, absolutely. But the threat of Linux malware existing at all leads me to go ahead and install an antivirus on my Linux system. Really, any system needs an antivirus. It's not a question of if someone will try to hack you with a piece of malware. It's a question of when. So yeah, you should join the open source movement. The time is now. I mean, look at what Microsoft is doing. Look at what Apple's doing. Do you want to be using those systems these days? Uh, I think that Linux is great because it gives you freedom. And we're not talking about like the pretend freedom that we have in the United States, but like real true freedom. But anyway, that was a look at my Fedora Linux system. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Share this video with your friends. Again, all of the money that we make off this YouTube channel is going straight into the hands of charities and missions and open source projects. So by sharing this video, by watching it, by engaging with my sponsors, you are directly contributing to something good in the world. And we want to keep it that way. So again, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.